welcome. It's Michael Murray with Benzinga. Today, I'm joined by Alex Moody, the CEO at Seeden Network. Alec, it's a pleasure to have you with us. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me today. Real pleasure to be here. Alex, it's a pleasure to have you here. We're very excited to learn more about you and Seeden specifically. Introduce yourself to us and what you guys do over at Seeden Network. Can we start there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Alex Moody. I'm the CEO at Seeden. Uh, Seeden is an infrastructure company that is primarily geared to provide a comprehensive toolkit that revolutionizes the interactive entertainment. Most people would think interactive entertainment as gaming. That includes, you know, sort of complex uh, multiplayer games, uh, AR, VR, uh, what we call metaverse level applications, things that sort of advance the technological limitations that we currently have in the gaming industry. Fantastic. Okay, now, Alex, a first point here. We've heard that your team is particularly consisted of great talents. You have advisors from both Web2 and Web3. The team is a big part of what you guys have over at Seedon. Who are some of your team members and advisors? Can you give us some context there? Yes, absolutely. Um, our team is stellar. Um, that That's kind of my main focus as the CEO is to, is to recruit the absolute best talent, put them in a place, give them the vision and direction to succeed, and then, and then set them free uh, to, to do so. I think um, our team is incredible. Um, leading sort of the, the top uh, tier of the gaming industry, we have Michael Haller, who's our head of gaming. Um, he's also the CEO and founder of, of Game Maker Inc., which is an LA-based uh, game development studio. But Mike's claim to fame actually dates all the way back into the, uh, the beginning of PlayStation 1 when he began developing games for that console uh, at, the, at the dawn of um, the 3D gaming revolution. Um, he was responsible for the turnaround at THQ when they were nearly bankrupt. He uh, he landed the, the the wrestling licenses and turned THQ into the third largest publisher in North America with their game of the year win after win after win with their with the wrestling. Ultimately, he went over to EA and uh, and became the general manager of the DreamWorks Interactive division when when EA uh, acquired DreamWorks and then he built. Uh, DreamWorks up to be the powerhouse that it was releasing sort of the, the, the entire uh, World War II gaming genre with Medal of Honor. And ultimately, the, uh, the devs and the modders that he found and he mentored in that process later went on to, to found Infinity Ward, who created Call of Duty. So, so Mike's been sort of at the very core of that. Um, rounding out our team, we have Julian Jordan, who's been producing, is our head of product. He's been producing tech and apps since dating back to the 80s in like Web Zero uh, era. We also have Sook as our CMO, um, well-known person from both Web 2 and Web 3. And uh, and then we just have an incredible team of advisors, uh, including Josiah Ruiz, who is the former CTO of Unity North America, uh, one of the largest gaming um, engines on the planet. Uh, so if people can take a look, the rest of our roster on our website or, or check us out in Discord, Twitter, whatever. Outstanding. Alex, great context. It's a rock star team you guys have over there. Let's talk a little bit about the industry that you guys are into. What do you think are some pitfalls, maybe some shortcomings of Web 2 and Web 3 gaming that Seedon is out here trying to address? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're the, the main thing that, that Seedon offers is it offers the technology that exists in in, in both Web2 gaming and Web3 gaming, as far as content creation. So the engines that are used to build games are, are highly outdated. Um, if you look at Unreal 5, which is, which is uh, uh, you know, widely considered the most technologically advanced engine on the planet today, uh, or Unity, which is what mobile games and sort of the less resource heavy games are, are built on, um, they're 25 and 30 years old respectively. And there's just a lot of stack tech debt and, there, and there's a lot of limitations that come with that as well as the fact that those toolkits are very inaccessible to the average user. So when, when, what Seedon has set out to do with our Eden engine, we, we have our, our own proprietary engine designed by Mike Haller and Josiah Ruiz, and, and that engine is, is designed of more value and higher uh, quality than Unreal, but with the accessibility that it's available to all. So we're actually open sourcing that through our Eden engine content creation ecosystem and will allow for games to be created by you know the average you the average content creator or the average user um, to be able to break into an industry that has now become highly centralized in in sort of the major corporations and then on the back end of that the seed network is a distributed decentralized uh, peer to peer interconnected network of NFT nodes that are operated. So it's sort of a concept of for gamers by gamers to content delivery networks. So the way that game games and content are created 
in the Eden Engine content creation uh, ecosystem and then distributed to the end user at the edge of the network through the NFT nodes uh, ecosystem. And so it's this idea of gamers serving gamers, providing a better experience and uh, and, and and creating that and, and making it accessible to everyone. That's fantastic. Really interesting. Alex, I also want to give you a big congratulations on the recent partnership with Layer Zero. Very exciting. What does the partnership entail and what does it mean for Seed and moving forward? Yeah, it's it's absolutely critical to what we're doing. Um, Layer Zero Labs is an incredible um, it's an incredible protocol. The interoperability that they allow uh, and the compostability that we can now um, travel from chain to chain and migrate assets, migrate uh, aspects of our of our ecosystem or aspect, aspects of our technology without all of the complications that come with you know, burning on this side, reminting on this side, recreation. So what that signifies, for one, they've been an incredible partner as far as development resources, mentoring, you know, marketing and so forth. But from a technological standpoint, it, it gives us the flexibility we need to develop into the future. The, the technology that we're working on, particularly with our NFT node network, this sort of edge of network computing or distributed uh, content delivery, the technology needed to truly realize the vision we have is probably three to five years away from uh, being fully realized. And, and so when you look at it in that context, if you go back three to five years and think about what blockchain technology looked like then, it's simply inconceivable for us to imagine what blockchain technology will look like in three to five years from now. And we need the flexibility to be able to migrate, to be able to utilize multiple chains because ultimately Seedon is chain agnostic. So it's sort of irrelevant where the chain lives as long as the resources and the technology is there uh, to deliver what we're looking to do. So ultimately it's very likely that Seedon lives on many chains or on chains that we really haven't re fully, uh, that aren't fully released yet or that haven't fully developed uh, um, or, or been reached their, their full potential yet. So layer zero is an absolutely critical partnership that allows us to, to utilize the technology that exists today to deliver what we're delivering today, but also to stay flexible to transition into the future as those needs change and, and the technology develops. Amazing. Alex, such a great amount of information so far. I've got a final question for you too before we close things out. Seed and Mint. Mint is right around the corner. The Mint is starting on the 29th. Are you excited for what's to come next and what can we expect out of the mint coming up here? Yeah, absolutely. So the first phase, uh, phase one is, is, is the mint pass, which we're minting on um, the 29th for, for allow list or early, um, early supporters. And then on the 30th for the, the open public for what's left. It's 4,444, um, very limited access. If people are still looking to get on the allow list, they need to, to act really quickly. Um, that's the first step. And that's ultimately the access that people will have to the ecosystem. After that, the Keystone NFT nodes will mint um, sometime in Q2. And, and every mint pass holder will get the opportunity to mint one of those for free at, on the destination chain. Um, and ultimately, uh, so then you'd have two NFTs, one that allows you access to anything that comes out of the Eden Engine content creation ecosystem and your Keystone NFT node in order to participate in the decentralized node network. So I think people should just take, uh, take a quick look, look at our light paper, read through all of, join our social channels and, and, and just kind of get a sense of what we're doing. And if it vibes with you, jump in the Discord, hit us up, get to know us. And, uh, and if, if you're called to mint on next week. That is incredible. A lot of exciting stuff coming up for you guys. We cannot wait to see it come to fruition and follow the story as you guys go along here. Alex Moody, CEO at Seed Network. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me.